Top 10 lists. That's America's way to say how we like things. You gotta make a list. You can't just tell someone that you like this thing the most. You gotta lead them from number 10 down to number one. And if you're wondering why I'm talking like this, my nose is completely clogged. And yes, I am shooting this on the night of December 29th. No, the day? It's two o'clock. No, it's one o'clock. What's wrong with me? I'm doing lists, okay? And I know people aren't gonna like it. I know it's not gonna be my channel's favorite. People don't like lists. People don't like when I talk about something else and not react. But today, I'm talking about my favorite things of 2021, except for my top 10 albums of the year, because the music thing is special to me, and I had a lot more to say about it, so that is going to be for tomorrow, I believe, or New Year's Eve. We'll figure it out. But today, I'm going to be talking about my top three video games, my top five movies. We're going to start with video games. Now, even though not a lot of games came out this year, I think that it should still be enough for me to make a top 10 list, but I don't play that many games. I'm pretty slow when it comes to gaming. I'm getting faster. There's not a lot that I've played this year. Let's start with some honorable mentions. Mentions, mentions. God, I can't talk. I need to give an honorable mention to Returnal. I knew it came out this year, but I just started playing it like two nights ago. And I think if I played it, enough it would be number one on my list number one on my list but unfortunately i've probably put like three or four hours into it and i'm not ready to fully judge it another honorable bullable mention to inscription another game that i think would be number one on my list if i played it enough shout out to before your eyes even though it's not really my kind of game i think it is a big change in what we're used to when it comes to video games and i think that choice is going in a good direction. Okay, I went on to talk about all these games that didn't get the top three spots, but I don't know why I would do that. Let's talk about my top three. Number three will have to be Little Nightmares 2. After my chat bullied me into playing Little Nightmares 1, I decided to try out the second one directly after playing the first one, and it was just more of that good, good stuff. I love the visuals. I love the music. I love the atmosphere. I love... It's just great. I, it looks good. It's a great game. It tells a good story, and it's also just the right amount of scary for what it is, and I love that. Number two is going to have to be a Nintendo game that did it right, and that's going to be Metroid Dread. Metroid Dread is my first Metroid game, and a Metroidvania that proved to me that it deserved to have its own genre. Because I love Metroidvanias, but Metroid Dread was a game that had a way bigger team behind it than most indies that are doing Metroid Dreads today. And it was just cool to see that this style of game that I really enjoy can really be this high quality and the mechanics can feel this good. Metroid was a fun experience. It was cool to be challenged by a Nintendo game. I liked the story. I liked the atmosphere. I liked the music. I liked how it didn't feel like you were going to get very many different environments, but it feels like every place you go to, they bring in something cool. Like now you're kind of outside of the jungle. And, uh... and my number one video game of the year has to go to Valheim. I have not put enough time into Valheim. It's one of those games where, like, I just, it angers me that I haven't played this game enough because it's an awesome game. I've put 39 hours into this game, and I, I have beaten one boss. Like, I have so, I'm not anywhere close. I've, like, scratched the very edge of what is this huge game that I know is so deep and means a lot to me but I need to go farther. Valheim's great, it's ever growing, it keeps going, and I need to play it soon. Oh my gosh, I forgot another game I love. It's been in early access for a couple of years, but Splitgate. I'm just gonna keep Splitgate away from this list because, because it was on early access and it's like a multiplayer shooter and it's not really in the same world as these games I'm talking about. Splitgate is a fun game, a great shooter, and I cannot get enough of it. I keep coming back to it. I love it. So that's that list. Also, if I were to talk about my favorite games that I've played this year in general, 
Okay, let's move on. We're going to move on to the movies. I know I got a lot of film people here who want to hear my favorite movies of the year. And I only have... I don't watch a lot of movies, okay? And so I <laughs> I literally typed out all the movies that I had rated higher than four stars on Letterboxd. And I have like six or seven. But I'm going to give my top three movies of the year. Okay, honorable mentions. Number three... Wait, there's not numbers in honorable mentions. I have to give an honorable mention to my Marvel boys out there, Spider-Man and Shang-Chi. I think that, don't kill me guys, I think Shang-Chi is a better movie. But would I rather see Spider-Man 10 times before I see Shang-Chi again? Does that make sense? No, but it makes sense to me. I freaking love the new Spider-Man movie, but... God, there's so many things I have an issue with, but luckily it seems like no one else really has those issues, but I don't know. I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm not going to say any more. I don't know if people still want me to make a spoiler review. Let me know. Marvel did great, but not enough to crack my top three. Whoa, I had a voice crack when I said the word crack. Or did I, did it crack on top? Wait, crack my top three? When, when did, I don't know. I don't remember. Marvel did great, but not enough to crack my top three. Oh, I also watched Last Night in Soho, and it was fine. It was pretty good. Okay, I'm editing this part in, but remember, I haven't seen every movie. I, like, really, really wanted to see Dune, The French Dispatch, and Lamb this year, and I didn't get around to it. But with that being said, you can now watch. Number three is gonna have to go to the new horror remake slash kind of a sequel to Candyman 2021. I love this movie. It's freaking awesome. Such a great telling of such a simple freaking concept and it's not too cheesy and it's just the acting is awesome and everything's awesome. It was shot really great too. Number two is gonna have to go to it might I, it was i would i was gonna say it was my favorite movie of the year i don't even know if my first ones counts as a movie but the suicide squad directed by james gunn oh my gosh this movie is so good it is one of the two five stars that i put out this year and i freaking love suicide squad there were people on Twitter who were telling me that the first Suicide Squad is better than the new one. What the heck are you talking about? <laughs> it's such a beautiful movie. It's shot so well. The music is great. The acting is awesome. The characters all fit themselves so well. It doesn't get better than the Suicide Squad. This last one, some people are going to be like, wah, wah, wah. this shouldn't be your number one. You're such a weird blah, blah, blah. No. Frick off. I waited till the freaking night that this came out and I watched it right away, okay? I've been a fan of this man for a long time and that is going to have to be what may just be considered a film. Uh, Inside, directed and everything by Bo Burnham. Inside is something that I've never seen before. It's something that on day one I watched and was immediately captivated by. I remember saying, I think this is one of the best pieces of entertainment that I've ever seen. And even though people want to freaking hate because Bo Burnham is like mainstream now and people like Bo Burnham, so now we need to like shit on him. I will give credit where credit's due and from the first time I saw it, it was something very special to me and I will not lie about that. I love Bo Burnham. I love Inside. I think it's amazing and inspiring and it is my favorite movie that came out this year i love that i had a horror movie i had a superhero movie and then i had some weird theater project now let's talk about my worst movies of the year five i have five on my list of the worst movies that came out this year okay number five we are going to give it to the new conjuring movie the devil made me do it no he didn't no he didn't or did he? I don't know. Man, how have I seen so many of the Conjuring Universe's movies? I've seen Conjuring 1 and 2, I've seen 3, I've seen Annabelle 1 and 2, I've seen the freaking. I never saw the La Leche one. Oh, that was so inappropriate. What is it called? And I never saw The Nun, but I did see this movie and it, it was boring. And I think that they could do so much better with the universe. And I don't really see how it's considered to be this universe thing, like the Conjuring universe, when so many of the films are just mediocre. It just feels like 
there's nothing special going on here. That's why I love Candyman so much. It's such a special story. Number four is gonna have to go to S -S -S Cinderella. Cinderella was bad. What should number three be? I'm gonna give it to Malignant. That's probably gonna be the hot take of the video is that I hate Malignant. I can't even say it with my nose. This was a horror movie trying to be some sort of campy film project and it was so bad it followed these horrible horror tropes and besides the twist which was kind of cool everything surrounding it was just fluff for this one cool gimmick that they had and the movie is very laughable number two is going to have to go to fear street whatever the first one is and i don't even care enough to look it up man that fear street movie was so bad there's this scene that is literally like teenagers having sex with each other yeah not tech no technically they weren't but they were hooking up in the movie and it was the they were high schoolers if one of them was like 14 and then this other girl was like 18 oh oh i can't even i don't even want to explain it's so bad the whole movie is so bad i didn't even watch the other two fear street movies the first one they tried to market that the maya hawk was in it spoiler alert coming up for the first fear street movie she dies in the first scene, so why are you advertising it? It's not even a cool, like, ugh, it's not even a cool twist. You just used her face for money. Because you were like, we have two of the kids, two of the new kids from Squid, from Stranger Squids, Stranger Thing. And the worst movie that came out this year is going to have to go to Don't Breathe 2, a sequel that makes no sense. It tries to, like, humanize horrible people, like, like, subpar humans and it tries to be cool and it's so not cool oh my gosh the first movie's great i really like the first movie this new one is just so bad like so bad it is like so laughable how awful this film is i just realized too at the end of the first one spoiler 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 the freaking girl and her little sister like move somewhere so, like, why didn't they make the new one about that guy, like, tracking her down or something? What is with this daughter and all this crap surrounding it? Those are the worst films of the year. Oh, man. I was gonna do my top videos of the year, but now I'm gonna edit that out because I cannot keep filming. <laughs> Thank you for watching the video. The album video will come out soon. The top videos of the year video will come out soon. And please stick around. December hates my videos, but I think things will get better. And next year is gonna be big. Peace out.